So hi everyone, once again I'm here at Ten Torrent. Um, we're going to ignore these for a second because I've got a special guest I want you to meet. This is Yasmina, one of the fellows here at Ten Torrent. Welcome to the channel, Yasmina. Thanks. Awesome I, to be here. I've known Yasmina since I've been doing my visits here to visit Jim and the family. Um, and the first time we met, you gave me a, a, a very secretive deep dive into some of the architecture. Oh, that's on the right. tennis court. I'm not sure. It was it was very fun, and it's stuff that they definitely want to talk about at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but we're here because tennis court has got some exciting stuff lined up. We're it's actually just before all that stuff is being finalized, so there's some things we can't talk about. But I wanted to get Yasmina on because she's part of this industry that's hustling and bustling, working with new novel hardware, hardware and software side. Um, I mean, you mainly deal on the software side. That's um, right. How's that been? We do a lot of hardware software co-design. Yeah. So the hardware software co-design is one of the key aspects of the software, right? Because if you just make new hardware, but nobody can program it, what's the point? Like the access, <laughs> the <laughs> yep. entry point is really, really important, mm -hmm. right? So the hardware software co-design is, is one of the key building blocks of what we do, and it's the key thought process that drives a lot of things here at TenStorrent. So. What in your background brought you to Tens Torrent? Oh, that's a good question. I, I did my doctorate in FPGAs mm -hmm. and uh, sort of, you know, a little bit of the CAD tool place mm -hmm. and route and then, uh, and then most of it on the high level synthesis side. Right. And, uh, you know, sometimes in the FPGA industry, we joke that the FPGA is the hardest thing to program mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. <laughs> which makes our, our pain tolerance level really high. <laughs> uh, so, so you can be and needled it, for a long time and that's be right. put up with it. Yeah. Yes. And, and it gives us a lot of this, like a strong drive to mm -hmm. make novel architectures really fun to program, really mm -hmm. convenient to program, to create these easy you know, entry points to hello world programs, mm -hmm. and then to create hardware and software environments that are fun to tinker with, mm -hmm. and that developers feel empowered and excited about new features coming in, and sort of can just brainstorm and think about all the cool and fun apps they can build on top. It's, uh, I, I speak with a number of the FPGA companies out there, and, and, and it's, uh, I always say, you guys need to abstract higher and higher, make it more and more That's and more right. accessible. And yeah. I feel like we're kind of at that same point a little bit with machine learning, right? We are. We're dealing with lots of these frameworks, yeah. PyTorch, TensorFlow, Onyx. That's right. And support for those is vital now. That's right. That's right. It's, it's really interesting to think about the different entry points, what they're mm. for. And then to think about the levels of abstraction and then, you know, is it a really high level entry point or mm -hmm. is it a low level entry point? And each one of those is important, but for a different use case, yep. right? So you always want to have a high level entry point. Mm -hmm. If you don't have one, like, like, you know, the, like the entry points are a matter of an and, not mm -hmm. an or, yep. right? You never want to go, I want to, you know, grab the developers by the horns <laughs> and force them down this path. You'll never force course. a developer. You will never force a developer. You will welcome them and you will guide them and have them yep. enjoy all the different paths that lead to Rome, i.e. Tensor, yeah, Tensor yeah. and hardware. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's been really fun to watch sort of the development of the different frameworks. Mm. So before we go a little bit down to this route, I do want to get into one of the reasons why we're here. So I kind of reached out and said, hey, do you have any hardware for me to unbox, for us to right. unbox? Uh, and, they, and they said, kind of. Um, so what we have here, explain, explain what we have. So there's two products here. That's right. So in these boxes is a product that we call Grayscale, or mm -hmm. a chip we call Grayscale. It is our Gen 1 hardware, our Gen 1 architecture. Mm -hmm. So it's the first one that is going out to customers, to developers. It's a dev kit. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are two different cards, uh, E75, which is, which is a smaller card, a smaller... 75, because like it's 75 watts. 75 watts. And then this guy is e, E150 again, again with a reference to wattage. It's, it's slightly bigger. And uh, yeah, I'd love to show you. Yeah, it's, uh, we, we, we've been told to focus on this one. Um, All right. <laughs> so, so, so that's the 150. Let's focus on the 75 watt. Um, I can already feel it's a bit, it's a bit lighter than this one. It's a one. bit lighter <laughs> than this one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. How about you so, do the honors? Oh, it's, 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 it's Christmas. It, well, it's not Christmas for another few weeks, but <laughs> it's Christmas. It's Christmas early. So, 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 so uh, when people get their hands on these, this mm -hmm. is what it's, this is what they're going to, end up with. That's right. This is so, what I experienced. So, 
Go for it. Ha ha. So the minute we open, uh, obviously the, the standard stuff, but because I know a lot of people in the audience are very familiar with the unboxing, say, graphics cards. Sure. And everybody knows what a graphics card is for. What's a machine learning card for? Well, here's, here's the handy, everything you need to set up um, right. your, 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 your card. Um, and we kind of already know that this is the very basic, uh, the very basic, this is the PCIe version. That's right. So we've got a half height, full length card. Um, let's shift this out of the way just for a second. Um, I can tell you've been using this on demos already with clients. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a fair few fingerprints on it. Um, but this is a typical sort of machine learning PCO card we would see, you know, for mass scale inference, perhaps in a data center. Um, but this is the developer version. That's right. So there's a bit more branding. That's right. <laughs> Definitely got the logo on side. Yeah. Um, You've got a blower fan. It's a bit hard not to notice. Um, yep, you got to plug this guy in. It'll be fun and it'll dry out, you know, drown out a little bit of noise from your neighbors. Um, but it's not, it's not that loud. Um, and it, it does fit into your desktop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it, it's because uh, even at 75 watts, you still need some amount of active cooling, active cooling in this form right. factor. I mean, if you put this in a dual wide, double proper height PCIe card. That's right. So but, there's, there's fun things that we are sort of exploring and mm -hmm. optimizing with respect to the fans and the cooling. So yep. there'll be more fun announcements coming down the line for that. Uh, this is what it looks like today, and we were very eager to get these out, to get mm -hmm. them into the hands of developers. We, you know, we're, we're okay with the cooling. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting. Like, we just want people using them. We want them going yep. to the website, downloading the tools, plugging them in, mm -hmm. trying things out, like just banging away on the hardware. It's, um, so th the way that this is going to go for you guys who are interested in this stuff, there's, um, at some point, they're going to be available to sign ups. Um, with that, somebody will reach out and at least acknowledge that you're actually truly a developer and you're actually going to use this stuff. And, and then it's going to be a case of you being able to buy it. Can we mention the pricing? Yep. Absolutely. So, so uh, if, I, if I remember this correctly, this is going to be the 599 version. That's US dollars. Um, mm -hmm. And then the 150 watt version will be 799. Yeah, is that right? That's right. Um, which uh, I know for a lot of um, very you know, entry level developers may seem like a lot of money. The, the, the realistic expectation you have to have, have is this is essentially a dev kit. That's right. right. It's designed for developers to get a gr uh, grasp of the system. So there are going to be small, medium businesses who are wanting to see if this is useful for their models. And that's the sort of price point that it goes at. It's it, low volume, typically, than a massive GPU launch. Exactly. So you have to do factor that in. For reference, um, uh, Sci Five did a board, and that was six hundred and sixty-six dollars. Uh, Qualcomm's dev kit for the Hexagon is is about six hundred. So this fits in right about that level. Exactly. The ballpark is there. We want to make the hardware accessible. Mm -hmm. We don't want it, you know, to hit your pockets too hard. Like we want people to be excited to play around with it. The the the, the one thing I so you know I speak to many companies in this space, and I, I keep telling them. Where's the dev kit? Where's the dev That's kit? Right. Make it accessible, make it accessible. These guys are actually doing that because it benefits a company like Tenstorrent to have you know, several thousand developers with the even with, if, you know, if, even if it's high level, still at the framework That's and, right. and, 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 or the lower level um, optimization. Um, but yeah, we actually have hardware. Mm, That's ah. right. You can <laughs> smell it. <laughs> it's, uh, We're excited. We're excited to get these into the hands of developers to get feedback. Um, yep. It's going to be, you know, Tenstorin is very, very proud to ship to ship hardware and to have people, you know, give us feedback, good, mm -hmm. good or bad. We want to hear it all. So, so uh, let's go through a bit what that experience is going to be like, and this won't definitely won't stand yeah. up. I didn't plan for this. It's okay. It'll, it'll, there <laughs> um, it'll be there. Yeah. Um, so, so. What's that going to look like for, for, for developers who get in touch, end up with a card in hand? Yeah, is it so, is just a link to the website to download the yeah, stack? Yeah, so the card sort of welcomes you and tells you where to go. Mm -hmm. and that's your first entry point. From there, you can sort of download the driver's tools and get the basic setup going. Um, and that's kind of table stakes. So you can plug this into your desktop and then install our drivers and tools. Is it um, Linux only, or are you supporting Windows as well? We're not supporting Windows yet. Not <laughs> That's right. Uh, yes, she said yet. <laughs> yes, I did say yet. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, it's it's on the roadmap. It's mm -hmm. not it's not there yet. Um, 
And uh, once you install the basic tools and, mm -hmm. and drivers, you can sort of check the health of the card. You can see yep. it come up. Uh, there, there are tools that will you know, give you confirmation that, that the hardware works and that yep. your computer recognizes what has been plugged in. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, you have a choice of going down one of two paths, mm -hmm. um, or both, preferably yeah. both, preferably <laughs> both. It's an <laughs> and, not an or. Yeah, right? yeah, they are looking for testers. So. That's right, that's yep. right. So one is a software stack that we call Buddha, and it's a compiler. Um, Buddha, that sounds familiar. It does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we talked about it a lot. It's on our website. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's the compiler that we've been working on, yep. and uh, and it's a it's a really fun way to get models working out of the box, mm -hmm. right? It's you know download model from Hugging Face uh, from from Hugging Face. Uh, Buddha will compile it and it will run it on our. Yep. Work. So that's really really fun, and uh, we refer to this entry point as a you know a high level top down entry mm -hmm. point because you don't have to change your environment, you don't have to rewrite your model. It's kind of push button. It works. It will run on the hardware and show you what's going yep. on. The other way is a bottom up stack that we call our bare metal programming model. Okay. And that one is a lot lower level, right? So it comes back to sort of the abstractions <laughs> and the yep. entry points. Yep. Its use case is a bit different. Right? Okay. It requires you to you know rewrite things in Python APIs, mm -hmm. right? It's not a PyTorch out of the box experience, yep. right? It's for developers that want to have fine grained control over the workloads that they're running on our hardware and have an alternative path to being able to write kernels all the way yep. down to kernels that run on our risk cores and, and drive the heavy math logic. On so like custom operators and everything Custom else. operators, custom data movement, custom hacks, custom, mm -hmm. you know, exp Custom explorations with novel ops they want to plug into their LLMs, like control flow, mm -hmm. like any kind of you know fancy caching, new embedding, like like all of that is accessible to you as a developer to tinker with, and you are never sort of blocked by a high level abstraction layer. You can yep. go, you can bypass it, and mm -hmm. you can go directly to kernels and control the low level hardware. In order for developers to do that, they're going to need to have a deep understanding of the underlying architecture. That's right. So there's going to be some disclosures about the 10.6 cores yes. soon. So the feedback that we got from customers yep. that have looked at our bare metal software stack mm -hmm. is, you know, they would come in and they would they would look at a sum, and after a few weeks they would say, "We understand everything that's in your hardware now, right?" <laughs> Without really the need fun. for that discussion. Which is really really fun. I mean, we have documentations, right? Yep. Like obviously, you know, it's a non-trivial entry point, mm -hmm. right? And um, you know we have documentation that explains the high level view of the architecture and the programming model. You know the two dimensional grid of cores, the knock. So we do set them up with with basics. Mm -hmm. And then what we see happen is that you know experts will go in and they will they will read our low level programming model. Mm -hmm. And and you know we we say like this layer is just a reflection, a mirror image yeah. of the hardware. Right? So what you see there is what you get. Mm -hmm. We don't try to package it for you. We don't try to steer you. This way or that way, like you know, what's in the hardware is 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 what's there, and then the bare metal programming model is just a reflection of how to directly drive everything yep. that's available in the engine, which is really cool, and I'm really excited about sharing that with yeah. the community. Well, it's, it's the developers you've worked with to date, and the the clients, the companies, the partners, they've obviously been NDA NDA'd up to the hilt for, <laughs> until now. That's right. Um, but but any developer gets their hands on this, there's going to be no sort of NDA in place, and exactly. the the idea is go out there, go. Exactly. Talk, play, poke. That's right. Tell us what's wrong. Tell yes. us what's right. Yes, we want that feedback. Yeah. We want the community engagement. Mm -hmm. So with the hardware that we're going to be shipping, we're also going to be open sourcing our full okay. bare yeah. metal software stack. So that means that you get to see the APIs, of course, mm -hmm. but you also get to see everything under the hood. Yeah. You get to see the way that the kernels get compiled, the memory mm -hmm. allocator, the way that the runtime arguments get copied onto the device, the kernels get dispatched. Like you see all of the plumbing and functionality. So it's kind of cool. Everything that somebody's going to write for one of these cards is going to be forward compatible with all future tense torrent hardware, right? So that's an interesting point. Um, maybe the right way to think about it is that there's two aspects of APIs, because that, that, yeah. that's kind of like API compatibility mm -hmm. in the thought process, right? So there are host APIs, and then there are kernel APIs, mm -hmm. right? On the host side of the APIs, um, we looked at OpenCL, we looked at CUDA, like we're very familiar with these yep. low level programming models. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel there. Mm -hmm. And so we mimicked those APIs to be intuitive and kind of, you know, 
yep. behave very, very similar and be mm -hmm. very familiar to developers at that yep. level. So host APIs are, are you know, relatively easy to keep, back, to keep backwards compatible. I'll probably regret that as, I, as soon as I say <laughs> it, right? Um, but, you know, they're kind of defined and they've matured to a yep. certain degree that, you know, the design space is, is not being like wildly explored mm -hmm. in that area. And then on the kernel API side, there is a strong desire to keep backwards compatibility. That's mm -hmm. important to us. Yeah. Um, however, in reality, you know, if you are allowed to color outside the box with mm -hmm. next-gen architectures, yeah. you can make leaps in performance yeah. and functionality. And it's a conscious decision, yep. right? To kind of go, okay, I'm gonna, you know, this is a new architecture, new gen, mm -hmm. next gen, we're gonna maintain backwards compatibility, mm -hmm. or we're gonna allow ourselves to color outside the box okay. and make a leap. So that's backwards compatibility, but everything will be forwards compatible. Anything you write for this gen will work on next gen. That's the goal. That's the goal. That's the goal. I know, I know you guys have been pretty vocal about upcoming roadmaps. And as the company has taken on you know, new clients and new investors, some of those things are changing. Um, from your perspective, obviously, it's one thing to support this, but you've still got to think about what's coming down the line. Mm -hmm. uh, how much does that change over time? What's sort of... coming down the line? <laughs> no, I, I mean, how, how you look at it from, from that sort of high and, high and low level software layer? Um, yeah, that's a really, really good question. High-level entry points are less susceptible to low-level changes. Yeah. Right? And developers like them because of that, mm -hmm. right? And because they give them a quick path to a desired outcome mm -hmm. when they stay within that, that sort of high-level programming model. And we want that. And, you know, we've seen, like, to go back to what you were saying earlier, right? Like, like before, there were a lot of frameworks that mm -hmm. developers used. Over time, they kind of consolidated onto PyTorch, yeah. right? So there was yeah. a consolidation effort. Now we see a growth in number of frameworks, yep. high-level ones. And it's interesting to note that, you know, like developers seem to enjoy things that are for a particular purpose. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of specialization there. Okay. Like if you make a high-level API that aims to do everything under the sun, yep. you usually end up with leaky abstractions <laughs> and developers that kind of get away. An attack surface for That's right. malicious. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So it seems that at the high level, you know, there are things that are special. There, there are APIs that are, you know, specializing towards a certain purpose, frameworks mm -hmm. that are specializing towards a purpose. And we are in that game as well. Um, with the low level API, we want to make sure that developers always have access to the hardware and mm -hmm. that nothing is hidden from them. And IP business is a big branch of ours yeah, yeah. That's, that's fairly yeah. important. And for a customer that's a potential IP customer or is an IP customer, they want to know exactly what's in there. Yep. Right? They want to control it, they want to drive it. And then sometimes they will get ideas about, oh, I wish I had this feature, that feature. Yep. And then they can sort of visualize that and, 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 and sort of figure out what they could want mm -hmm. through the low-level software. Yep. So that entry point is, is super important for us. Um, I mean, these cards here that we've got in front of us, they're, they're more for, you know, sort of the take home, put in your workstation. But you guys have had uh, hardware in the cloud for a little bit as well. That's right. That's How's that been? Built, built its own cloud, ground, yeah. ground up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's important for those first clients who are getting on board to start testing. How's that been? It's an easy entry point. It's yep. super convenient. Right, it's you know it's SSH and off you go to Hello World. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been really really fun. It's the fastest way to get people to access the hardware and try out simple things, and then also try out complicated things. We have customers who are running on the cloud today, mm -hmm. and it's a great test bed for us. Yeah. Right? So we make drops to the cloud. We deliver our software to the cloud. They are our first internal customer, yeah. and that feedback loop has been really really important. Customers enjoy the very quick turnaround that we can give them. Okay. In terms of machine access and everything is set up and works as they just SSH in. So and, and the reason, so the reason why you're perhaps not opening, so some companies open up a cloud to developers to get one instance or whatever. You guys are going down the hardware route because we're it's, about ands, not ors. And, 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 and about ors. <laughs> yeah, we want both. Yep. We want both. Um, we have a certain amount of cloud capacity today. Yep. We utilize it almost 100%. Every single new <laughs> server we put in, there's there's a wait list of folks yep. waiting to try okay. it. Okay. And uh, we want to make sure that developers can get hardware in yep. their desktop. You know, they can hear it run and you know they can go on and mm -hmm. install all the tools and, and test that flow as well. I think hardcore serious developers, they love 
being able to touch the hardware and yeah, install yeah. Oh, yeah. and having things in their own hands, right? mm. as opposed to some server distant somewhere that something happened to it yep. and went down. Like, it's you know, it's about it's about empowering developers, mm -hmm. right? So, so with the cloud, it's easy to do those very fast track updates, especially if it's right. a client who's putting in you know yep. money um, and money over time. For individual developers, how are you gonna? Uh, discuss with that and that community um, about how updates are being rolled out and so we have releases for both software stacks yep. um, announcements that will go uh, together with that release cadence mm -hmm. um, the sort of underlying tools have their own releases as well yeah and so all of this will be announced on our on our website yeah and uh, developers can uplift to latest versions as, as kind of as they see fit. Of course, in the cloud, uh, this is a little bit more behind behind the scenes. Fluid, yeah. Yeah, a bit yeah. more fluid, right? Yeah. So when this hardware goes out, you've already got a support staff ready <laughs> to deal. <laughs> That's right. We have. Uh, we're you know we're a pretty small team. Yeah. I'll say. Um, so on the bare metal programming model, we're we're not a we're not a huge team. We're we're a small team of, mm -hmm. of you know very very smart individuals, super excited and super dedicated to shipping the software, to open sourcing mm -hmm. it and, and kind of showing it to the community. That said, we're not yet at the stage of being able to service and, and sort of keep up with large pull requests, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think I think that's normal. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I think that's kind of like a growing stage that that community mostly mostly understands. Yeah. Uh, we want to be able to develop in the open, we want to be able to show what's there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then and then we have strong ambition to grow to the point that that we can have strong collaborations with open source community. D d d does it matter that there are several dozen other AI hardware startups out there doing their own thing? Did you ever think about you know competition versus collaboration or anything? Yeah, else? I think it helps that yeah. there are other startups doing yep. similar things as we do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the goal here, like we're in the race against Nvidia. And, and we want as many players in our court as possible, mm -hmm. right? Of course, we race with them. You know, a lot of our colleagues work in the other startups. We all kind yep. of know each other. It's fun, yep. <laughs> right? It makes for, for interesting Thanksgiving dinners. <laughs> OK, OK, OK. Yeah, but um, one, I think... One family member at one company, one family member at another. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's happened. It's yeah. happened. My husband and I worked at Xilinx and Altera at the same time, so it's oh, well. for soon. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think... I think it helps. Mm -hmm. I think things that you know, activities and companies, software stacks that that grow the community and and get it to be diverse, like increase that design space. Mm -hmm. uh, it helps. We learn from each other, um, and and it's a long it's a long path ahead. I I think it's going to be really really fun. And now we see software stacks that are moving away from just PyTorch. Mm -hmm. right? So for us, uh, we have a roadmap item to integrate into PyTorch 2.0 natively. Mm -hmm. And to generate a pull request and to be in the open open yep. source repo, right? So that's that's on our roadmap. Um, but we also see that that there's a trend of software stacks that are being developed specifically for a piece of hardware, yep. because you can then control the APIs and allow users to do specific things that are native to that hardware, right? Mm -hmm. Without sort of forcing developers to go behind this general one, <laughs> you know, to rule them all, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. API yeah. and ecosystem that, that leads to leaky abstractions if yep. you want to do specific things. Yeah. Right? Um, so I think it helps. Anything that grows the ecosystem is good and fun. So for somebody who ends up getting this hardware, what's the first thing that they should do? Uh, what's the first model that they should run just to make sure it yeah. all works? To, yeah, you know, yeah. what, what's, the, what, what's the shakedown procedure? What's the shakedown? That's cool. We have, for both software stacks, um, yeah. a landing page that takes you through first five things. Yep. And that's really fun. For Buddha, there's a, there's a few models you can just sort of, you know, like you're five clicks away and the script away from running end to end. Mm -hmm. On the bare metal side, uh, there are a few models that are optimized for performance that you can run out of the box. Mm -hmm. And then there are a few kernels that you can run and sort of see how things work end to end. And the stack also comes with debug tools, kernel print, uh, performance. Uh, performance we integrate into the open source Tracy tool so you can yep. see performance profile of what's happening. Um, so it's kind of, you know, what's the level of exposure and deep dive that you want to go in? And there's the first five things that take you progressively mm -hmm. down that path all the way to running, running kernels and seeing what happens. So how, you... how often do you have to report back to Jim on what the community is saying? <laughs> is that decided yet? Uh, it's, 
it's it's moving from hourly to daily. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's frequent. He he deeply cares mm -hmm. about what the community is doing. Yeah. And and he's driving Tanstorrent into strong awareness of of community values, software development values, and ensuring that the entry point is is really convenient and mm -hmm. fun for developers. Right. So it's good. You, you say hardware, software, co-optimization. Yeah. You're very, you're very much, I, I feel like, so passionate about the software side. <laughs> it's, 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 it's good to hear. It's, it's great that you guys are being open and, and essentially explain to everybody what you're doing, right? It's, I have so many um, conversations with other people and they just want to keep it closed up just for That's them. Right. And, yeah. um, and, 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 and you guys know I've been advocating for more hardware in the hands of people. That's right. Um, so so this, is, this is a first step. Long may it continue. Thank you, Yasmina, for being on the channel. Thanks. Yeah, it's really fun. <laughs>